Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Some of you are wondering if today's service was perhaps secretly sponsored by the American Dermatological Association because our Torah portion talks about what happens if someone has a boil or blemish or rash or scar or scab or scald or scale or cyst. And if you do have a boil or blemish or scar or scab or scale or cyst, you are supposed to go and call a Kohen and he looks at it, comes back later and looks at it again. And if it meets one of the criteria specified in our Torah portion this week, then you have what is called sara'at, translated as leprosy, and then the next couple of chapters of Leviticus tell you where to go and what to do. And so that's a part of the portion that I think if you haven't picked up on by now, you have not been paying close attention. But there's one part of this portion that strikes me as a little bit harder to understand even than that, which is as follows. Let's say that it is a boil or blemish or scar or scab or scale or scale or cyst that expands and grows until it covers the entire body. And Leviticus says that if whatever this condition is covers the entire person from head to toe, anywhere that the Kohen can see, then in that case, the afflicted person is pure. In that case, the afflicted person does not have this tzara'at and is free to move about the cabin. And so, on the other hand, if this person who is entirely covered in whatever this affliction is, the boils or blemish or scars or scabs or scalds or scale or cysts, I spent a lot of time practicing saying that, by the way, it's really hard. <laughs> if one part of it becomes clear, then the person is impure. So it's sort of weird. A little blotch or blemish makes you impure. If all of you has it, then great, you're good to go, no problem. But then if one part of you heals, now suddenly you are back on the Mishabarach list. And so to some extent, we could try to come up with a medical definition of what this is, but really even medically, no one really knows what this tzara'at is, although there's probably a commercial for it, something that ends in nab on late night TV. But I'd like to suggest to you that there is actually a spiritual component of this relevant for us in our individual personal lives and maybe for how we think about the bigger world as well, which is this. If we put a person in a certain class, if we think of a person as having wholly a particular characteristic, we kind of discount that aspect of them. We don't expect anything different. So if you have a kid who is a steady C student and they get a C, nothing happens. On the other hand, if you have a kid who's a solid A student who comes home with a C, there's a conversation to be had. What went wrong? And so when you have someone who you see as being entirely a certain way, you have a different sort of expectation for them than a person who you thought was okay, and now there is a blemish. So we can think about that in terms of the world of perhaps not just in the world of school, but maybe at work, right? There's that person who like, well, I once got a, uh, asked someone for a reference and they said, you would be very lucky if you could get this person to work for you. <laughs> right? There's always that person who like, they must be somebody's nephew if they're working here. But you know, like not to expect great things from them. But then there's somebody else where like you give them an important task and they fall down and you're like, what happened? We have this idea often in our heads that we put someone in a class and they no longer, we no longer have the same expectations for them that we do for everyone else. 
And so in some ways, an entire person's being being blemished is not as bad as a person who is otherwise great having one spot. So if I think about this in the world in which we live today, I think about a double standard that applies in the world with Israel. So Hamas is a terrorist organization, so they kill hundreds of people, they slaughter medics and ambulance drivers, and it's business as usual. Israel miscalculates which of the cars that went in which direction was a terrorist van and which one was the catering truck with the aid people and fired on the wrong one, immediately stands up and said, we made a mistake, we have to fix this, but that's it, it's the end of the world. A person who is entirely evil versus someone who makes a mistake, but because the world has expectations, well, that's just who they are, the normal rules don't apply. Another thought on this topic. <clears throat> the Khatam Sofer, who was a sage who lived in Hungary in the 18th to the 19th centuries, said this about where Jews live. He said that when Jews live in a place that is totally against them, in some ways that is easier than living in a place where things are eh, because remember the second part of that law, if you have a person who is totally blemished, but then one part becomes okay, that's bad. Well, here's the thing. If you lived in, God forbid, Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany, there came a point where you know, I need to get out. This is no good. There is nothing redeeming about being here. Get me a plane ticket and resettle me. On the other hand, if you're living in a place where people are rioting in the streets calling for your destruction, but you still get to have your house and your job and some things are okay, maybe you don't worry about it so much until you need to. So sometimes, right, a situation in the Khatam Sofer is saying this in the 1800s in Hungary, about 100 years too early, right, that he refers back to the days of Achashverosh, the days of Purim, right? That everything is fine, there's parties until it is not. So sometimes some place that has sort of speckles and spots is even worse than the place that's all bad. We are coming up on the holiday of Passover. It's coming up in like nine days. And what Mitzorah and Passover have in common is the need for inspection, right? Just like the Kohen is looking at every pore, looking at every spot and dot, so too there are people who are looking at every crack and crevice on their countertops to see, is there a crumb in there? Did this grain wait more than 19 minutes? Is this matzah or chametz? So here's the funny thing about chametz and matzah. So only the things that can, be that can become chametz are things that can be matzah. So there are a lot of things people don't eat on Passover. People don't eat rice or peanuts or whatever. Rice, no matter how hard it wants to, no matter how much it aspires, can never be chametz, right? It's only the kinds of grain that you can make matzah out of, like wheat and oats, spelt, those are the ones that can become chametz. So if you will, if you are totally out of the game, no one's judging you anymore, it doesn't matter. On the other hand, right, it's when you have the capability of being great that having a blemish matters. So here is really the question that I want to leave us with and what I hope will think about as we come into this season, we look at a world of news. So we all live in a world where we have expectations of people. We have people we have in our minds, they are all good or they are all bad. And if they're all bad, we don't expect anything from them. We hold them to no standard whatsoever. 
And then maybe the, the people who are in general all right, but that one blemish says, that's it, I can't stand it. You've got one spot, one scar or scab or scale or cyst, I'm out. And I would encourage us to do what the Kohen had to do, which to not take it for granted that where someone was before or what someone was before is what it will be ahead. If you will, the question that we have to ask is, can the leper change his spots? And the Torah portion says, Sometimes, yes. That's why you look again in a week, a month, a year. We live at a moment in history where things seem to be more cloudy than bright. No matter who you are rooting for in American politics, I don't know anyone who feels good about it. It's like being a Mets fan, either way. And certainly, looking at the situation in Israel, how the world judges Israel, looking at how Israel is preparing even now for what might happen with Iran in the coming weeks, it feels a little dire. There is a teaching in the Talmud Tractate Sanhedrin, which says, the redemption of the world will not come until the entire world is terrible. It will actually it will not be dawn until it is totally dark. And they derive it from this verse that I've been talking about. Only when a person is totally turned is there the possibility for purity to come. That the world will only be redeemed, that sometimes things actually do need to get better before they get worse. Sometimes a situation needs to get so bad that you can't not but notice and do and act and respond before the situation can change and improve. When we talk about recovery, we talk about hitting bottom, right? A person is not motivated to go into rehab, to go into 12 steps because they had a bad day. They decide to make a change because they realize that this has become their whole self and they want to be a different person. And so my hope, my prayer is that for each of us individuals, we manage to find that moment to turn. And that so too, perhaps for the world as well, that there comes that moment when the world realizes we have reached a point of absurdity. We've reached a point where everything is scarred and scabbed and scalded and it's time to turn to a place of purity. Shabbat Shalom.